So let's look at an example of interacting parameters. And we'll start with this one, this parameter here, head directionality, uh, which we've talked about before. And so in languages like English and Edo, you would have a head first value. And this gives you basic word orders where, for example, in the verb phrase, the verb comes before other things like the object. And in, say, a preposition phrase, it is a pre or pre position that comes before the object. And so that is one value. The opposite value, the competing value, would be for languages like Japanese and Navajo. And so head final would mean that in these phrases, you'll see, for example, that the verb is final in the verb phrase. So uh, that's that ob object verb word order. And you have post positions, right? Because you have that main uh, head of the phrase at the final position within that phrase. Okay, so here are your two values. Great. Now here's another parameter that we haven't talked about before, and it's called verb second. And one value of this is the kind of value plus verb second that you would see in languages like German, where the verb seems to move to the second phrasal position and some other phrase moves to the first position. So this means that you would have an underlying form of the sentence where you have Sarah, the book reads, so subject, object, verb. And the observable form has the verb moving to the second position and the subject moving to the first position, right? Here's one observable form. Sarah reads the book. Sarah reads the book, right? Now another way, now that you have the same underlying form, subject, object, verb, but when the verb moves to the second position, maybe the object moves. And this is how you get the book reads Sarah as another legitimate observable form in a verb second language. So all you care about is that the verb is in the second position and something else is in the first position. So that's plus V2 plus verb second. This is my cat in the background making all kinds of exciting noises. All right, so let's talk about the alternative option, which is minus verb second. And this is a language like English where the verb doesn't move. You, what you see is what you get, right? So you have the observable form of the sentence is really the same as the underlying form. So Sarah, the subject, reads the verb, the book, right? Okay, so great. What's so hard about this? So if we just have these two parameters, and with each two values, you have four possible grammars with the idea, again, that a grammar is a combination of parameter values. So head first versus head final, verb second versus minus verb second, right? So four possible combinations. Let's just, you know, kind of visualize them this way. So let's consider this data point, a subject, verb, object data point. Which grammars can actually analyze this data point? Well, let's look at them one at a time. So in this case, Head first would predict that you have subject, verb, object, order, and verb second would predict the verb would move to the second position, so in this case maybe the subject moved to the first position. So these two values are compatible with this data point. They can account for that data point. So great, that's grammar one. What about grammar two where you have head final plus verb second? Well, this is actually very German of us. So now you start with object verb in the underlying form, right, because that's your object verb, and then you've moved the verb to the second position and the subject to the first position to get the observable order that we actually see. So this grammar is also compatible with this observable data point. Okay, what about this grammar? So this says that we want to have head first, we want to have a verb before the object, and we don't want to move the verb at all. What you see is what you get, so that's fine because this is what we would predict. So head first predicts subject verb object minus V2 means we don't move our verb. That's fine, that's compatible. So grammar three is compatible. What about grammar four? So head final predicts subject object verb and verb second minus verb second means we don't move anything. Well, if you start with subject object verb and you don't move anything, you can't get here, right? You can't, there's nothing that it will allow you to change that order. So this grammar actually is the only one that's not compatible and it's become not compatible because it's predicting subject object verb order. All right, so okay, so we have three that work, one that doesn't, fantastic. So what do the grammars that can analyze this data point have in common? And the answer is a bit, right? So we don't know whether the true grammar, the true grammar for this language is head first or head final since there's a grammar of each kind among the ones that can actually account for this data point, although there are in fact more head first grammars. Uh, we don't know whether the true grammar is plus verb second or minus verb second since once again, there's a grammar of each kind though, once again, there are actually more verb second ones, right? But the point is, this is ambiguous, the data point isn't unambiguous for any of the parameters we're interested in in this little teeny world because these parameters interact. Although we might feel like that 
this data point should be somewhat informative for maybe the ones that showed up more often in the grammars, right, that were compatible. Head first, right, we have two of those, and plus verb second, we have two of those, but, you know, technically, it's ambiguous, 